What's up, everyone? I don't know why I never get, um, I don't know why I never get the, uh, I never get notification on my channel. I used to get notifications. Everybody getting, obviously you guys are getting notifications. Uh, let's see here. Um, wait, what? Huh? Wait, what? Would you possibly be a copy of the track for Epic? I engineer, produce, and mix that record. Oh my god. Okay, you ready for this? Okay. <laughs> this is This is awesome. Okay, so I Okay, so I did um I did this Faith No More song, right? For um and the producer, the guy that produced it, Matt Wallace, wrote to me and doesn't have the tracks and wants to know if I can send him the tracks. How hilarious is that? It's so cool. Um, that is great. Um, okay, so let's see. Incubus, they didn't have the tra their tracks. I sent them six of their songs. Um... Uh, train they didn't have drops of jupiter they they uh they're like where did you get it from <laughs> and now this guy produced he engineered and mixed the record um it's uh it's uh pretty weird right it's amazing how many bands Calzone, that's right. It's amazing how many bands don't have them. Uh, I tell you, one person that I really wanted to, to uh, I probably shouldn't say it on here, that who's who I want to do a song is Ken Andrews, who's a singer for Failure. What's up, Giola? What's happening? Uh, Ken Andrews is a great producer, and he was a singer of Failure, and he did a record called um, uh, Stuck on You was the big single. It was... Um, um, just a great, great record. Um, Fantastic Planet it was called, and he did it all on ADAT, and he couldn't get the. Um, I don't have the tracks. He couldn't get them from the label. He doesn't have them. They won't give them to him. I guess I don't know. Uh, it's ridiculous that people don't have their own tracks, but. Um, I mean, this guy, he goes, I engineered, mixed, and produced produce that song and be great to listen to it. That, um, um, this is so nice. So cool. Labels own the tracks. Yeah. You know, you know what though? And I mean, now since 2000, everybody has copies of their own, of their own tracks. People that produce them keep a copy, um, of them. Oh, by the way, before we go on, I'm going to mention this a few times, and I'm sorry I never do this on here. I'm doing my discount code for this channel, and I and it's ridiculous that I never do it for here. Everything in my store is 25% off. That's the thing I've done like three times before. I just made a code here for this. It's RB170. Uh, I don't know why I picked that as a code, but that's the code. Let me look at it. Yeah, RB170. Uh, so anybody on here can get 25% uh, off. If you want to, you know, support the channel, you want to uh, buy a mug, whatever. I know many of you probably have them. be out of book, whatever. But it's for sale. And I apologize that, uh, that I haven't done it on this channel. I don't think ever, honestly. I don't know if I've ever done a discount. And it's really... Uh, and I've given that 25% discount a couple times, but 
I'm doing it here tonight. Um, so, uh, so there you go. Um, those of you that paid, paid full price, you're supporting the channel, you know, but, uh, I, I appreciate everything. I'm just about to hit 17,000. Um, uh, I'm just about to hit 17,000 subscribers on the, uh, on this channel. I'm at, uh, oh, maybe, maybe not. I thought, well, I thought I, maybe I'm not. Um, can I do Thorn, Ian Thornley or Big Rec? Yes. Um, it would help if I knew Ian. I follow him on, uh, he's one of the few people I actually follow on Instagram. I think he's a great singer and guitar player. Incredibly good. Oh, man. Eli, what are those Marshall heads over there? Any plexis? Of course, man. I got plexis. I got everything. Got a lot of Marshalls down there. Look at all that. A bunch of Marshalls. What's up, Elliot? So, uh... Um... It's, uh, anyway, so I've got, uh, I got a bunch of stuff. I got a bunch of stuff hooked up for next week. Um, oh, Dean, what model, Leslie? That's a 147. Um, I have to, I actually have to, um, I got to write Luke if they're back. That's the thing. I got to remember to do that. But I'm hopefully going to interview Vinny Caliuda. I'm going to meet with Christian Henson from Spitfire. He's going to be there. I'm going to um, interview Chris Lord LG, Tim Pierce, um, Junkie XL, Sinister Gates. I'm doing a video with him. And hopefully I'm going to meet his dad, who's, who's a, <laughs> dad's a year younger than me. Dad is a great guitar player. Um, um, and uh, will there be Zapper-related questions with Vinny? Um, I don't know. We'll see. I've known Vinny for 30 years, more than 30 years. So... Uh, I, I connected with him again last week for the first time in forever. And, uh, I mean, I can't even remember the last time I talked to him, but um, uh, we we Skyped last week. And, uh, but I'm going to, I'm going to see him out there. Um, could I do Santeria by Sublime? You know what? Nobody asked me about Sublime and they were a great band. And yes, I will do that. Ask Vinny about the flying jib, okay. Can I get you into NAM for free, VA? I wouldn't know how to do that. What is a fat sound, Omar? <laughs> fat, it's got, you know, it's thick. Fat is thick, you know? That doesn't necessarily mean a lot of bottom end. Um, it's just where all the notes have, have are just, wide they sound like they're you know like on guitar that you're playing with steel cables or something which i guess you are playing with steel cables uh that's fat dense thank you martin dense is more more like it yeah dense fat fat am i gonna do more steely dan yeah maybe um maybe um there's so many, I mean, I've done it um, thick. There we go. Um, I'm not sure what I'll ask Vinny, but, um, but he's such a great dude, really is. Um, well, Ryan, okay, so... Um, I told I said this earlier. Whoever wasn't on here, um, I'm doing a discount for this channel 
25% off anything in my store. I apologize that I haven't done this before here. And the code is RB170. So if you want to get the Beato book, anything, you know, RB170. There you go. Put it in there. Ask about nested tuplets. You know, I don't think that Vinny even... I'll be curious. I'm going to ask him about stuff like that. Um, I don't think he even thinks about that kind of stuff. Um, he's... Um, I, don't, I don't know. He studied with Gary Chafee. Um, he and Steve Smith... Gary was was very big into polyrhythms. He was a professor at Berkeley. And um, um a, a beer mug. You know what? I think they I think we can get a beer mug made. I'm gonna do that. How did I meet Vinny? Okay, this I'll tell you the Vinny story. When I was in grad school, I had this roommate named Bob Blobner, okay? Robert Blobner. True story. He has since changed his name. Um, he was a bass player. Great bass player. Uh, this is when I was going to NEC. So he, he had lived in L.A. before he moved to Boston, and when I met him, he was, um, he was playing... Um, he was playing with Aiden, doing a, doing um, like in a quartet or a trio or something, right? So, um, and he and I were playing together. Well, the three of us were playing together. So, um, we play Riles or the thirteen sixty nine Jazz Club. This is you know back in whatever eighty five or something. So one day, I get a phone call. I answer, and he's like, "Yeah, is Rob there?" I'm like, "Yeah, here he is." He's talking to him. Everything comes in. He comes in. You know, he goes, "You know who that was?" And I said, "Who?" He goes, "Vinny Caliuda." I said, "You know Vinny Caliuda?" He said, "Yeah, I used to play with him out in L.A." I said, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, I played tons of gigs with him out in L.A." Um, and then he says, "You know, you know that gig that we have in a couple weeks at Riles? I think it was at Riles." And I said, "Yeah." He said, let's get Vinny to come out. I'm going to call him back now. Let's get Vinny to come out and play that gig. I was Because uh, we didn't have a drummer. So it was me and Sky. Well, he goes by Sky now, but Rob, Vinny, and Aiden Quartet. And uh, he calls him back. And Vinny's like, hell yeah, I'll come out. So Vinny flies out. I, I, we, we made posters. Put him up around Cambridge. And uh, and back then, Vinny Caliuta did not go and and uh, play small clubs. You know, he had just finished playing with Zappa a few years before. So, um, so I go around Cambridge and Berkeley and I, and I put up posters along with Rob. And I didn't, you know, I didn't knew Zappa and everything, but he didn't really know much about Vinny's playing. Um and uh, I didn't listen to Zappa though. He knew, yeah, he knew he knew Vinny's playing, but um, uh, anyway, so we start putting up posters, and people are looking at, looking at this. And they're like, I forget what it was called. It was like Rick Beato Quartet featuring um, uh, featuring Vinny Caliuta, right? Um. <coughs> Dean, the reason you can't hear my guitar is because I'm not, I didn't play after Iden's solo. I, I didn't dare take us after Iden and Vinny took a solo. I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to play anything. We just played the head again after. So anyway, so I went in Cambridge and put up things, but you know, really from putting up Berkeley, all of a sudden the people at Riles called me up and they said, Oh my God, we've gotten 300 phone calls about this gig with this, with this guy Vinny that, that you're playing with. You're gonna have to do two shows. I said, what? He's like, yeah. And I said, what do you mean two shows? He says, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, do like uh, eight to 9.30 and then 10 to 11.30 or something like that. So I said, okay. So um, 
so we uh, so we do two shows. Uh, Vinny flies in. Steve Smith was at the show. I want to say. This guy, Jonathan Mover, came in and was Vinny's drum tech for it. Um, uh, Armin Zildjian came to the gig, took us out to dinner. I remember Vinny got off the plane and he had broken his glasses on the plane. He wore these really thick black glasses. So he was uh, he was trying to fix them on, on the cab ride with some super glue to the to the rehearsal that we were doing in the afternoon. And he was trying to bite the thing open. He got super glue on his tongue. <laughs> I totally, totally remember this. And he's like, oh, I got super glue on my tongue. <laughs> it was totally weird, right? And he comes in and he was so cool. And um uh he had a drum pad with him and he was he was practicing. You know, Vinny was, so I was like, what, 22 then or something? 20, yeah, 22. Vinny was probably, oh God, 28, something like that. Uh, and then we went up and rehearsed and oh my God, it was unbelievable. Uh, I mean, Vinny didn't really have to... Uh, Joe Satriani's first solo tour drummer, Jonathan Mover. Yeah, exactly. Jonathan Mover was the was the drum tech on it. Um, but yeah, Steve Smith was there. Uh, like every drummer in a six hour radius came to this gig, and the two shows were sold out, and uh, and it was a blast. And we did it a few times. We did it probably. I don't know, maybe four times over the course of a couple of years. Um, <coughs> Vinny had never heard Iden. He was blown away. Um, and, I mean, I couldn't really hang with those guys. When you're talking about, you know, playing a guitar and then and uh, and then trying to play with Iden, playing a synth and Vinny, I mean, it was just, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was it was tough. It was tough. I was uh uh I mean I didn't care or anything, but it's like man, I can't I, you know, I, I could I couldn't I couldn't hang with those guys. That was too uh um uh it was uh but it was cool, it was fun anyways. It was fun. And um um, it was, it's amazing to play with a drummer like Vinny. Really, really, um, did I see Jake Lizzo reference my channel in his latest video, Signals Music? I don't know who that is, VA. Who is that, Signals Music? Um, I don't know Jake. Should I know Jake? I hate when I don't know people like that. Um, um, but it was it, funny. It was my gig. It was the Rick Beato Quartet featuring Vinny Caliuta. And uh, Iden was the side man in there, even though we did some of Iden's tunes, I think. I can't remember now. Um, uh, it was, it was a blast. It was, um, it was, uh, he does lessons on YouTube's modes. Um, sing, what was it called? Signals? Signals Music? Let me look it up here. Uh, that, that was, those were good times, man. So Vinny, um, it was great to talk to him. I think the last time I saw Vinny was probably 2005. Um, oh, here's Aaron is on here right now taking over my computer. He just got, Aaron just got on my computer and he was taking it over to do something. And, um, and realized that I was on live. That's pretty funny. Um, yeah, so, so, but I hadn't talked to Vinny in forever. And it was, it was really great catching up. I'm looking forward to, to, uh, to, to seeing him. Let me see here. 
What's it called? Signals what? Aaron. <laughs> Aaron, the stuff uploaded, I thought. Or is it still going? Hold on, let me look. Do you need it? Is that 60 of 60? Um, signals music. Let me look it up. Music. 159,000 subscribers. Wow, that's pretty good. YouTube's best music teachers. Is that, did I make it in there? Let's see here. Um, I see Adam Neely re responded there. Um, This is Rick Beato. Um, I'll have to check it out. So somebody, um, so somebody wrote me a, a, a comment here. I got to read it to you. Uh, where can you email me? Uh, just email me at rickbeato1 at gmail. So I'm doing my... I'm doing my uh, sale here. I'm going to mention it again now because there's about 30 more people on. Everything's 25% off my store for this video. Nine, uh, RB170. If you guys want to buy anything um, on, in my store, you can. I'm sorry I never offer discounts here. It's really kind of lame, and, and I apologize for that. Um, so... Um, so this guy writes, um, some guy writes to me here, um, you know, Sky from Pittsburgh, Joe, you played the same clubs when he fronted seventh house. Exactly. That's exactly right. That was, that was Sky who knew Vinny, who played with Vinny, which is why I know Vinny. Which, um, okay, so here's the, this is the, uh, this is the, this is the, um, that's, that's hilarious, Joe, that you know him. Um, he kind of, I don't want to say anything. I don't, we don't communicate anymore. Um, he's, um, he had a car accident and, um. And or he got hit by a car or something. He lived. He was fine. But but I hardly talked to him after that. Um, it was years ago, though. Years. I have no idea what he's doing now. Okay, so here's... This is, a, this is a comment somebody wrote to me the other day. Rick, I used to be a subscribed... Well, I mean, this, this isn't quite... Uh, he's an actor now. Okay. You can still gift the Beato book to someone else when you buy. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah yes, you can, David. Um, Rick, I used to sub be subscribed to your channel, but much like Adam, who I also unsubscribed from, I feel like you are A, or number one, pandering to mainstream audiences, or number two, a poser. You aren't much older than me, so I don't see how you could be educated enough to appreciate jazz and still like Nirvana. Don't get me wrong, the underground 90s was pretty innovative, but Nine Inch Nails or Nirvana? It seems a bold contradiction to explain almost atonal film music and then review some corporate 90s trash. Even in terms of, yes, you could have reviewed any song off Fragile, but you chose Roundabout? I suppose when people gain audiences, they have to pander to them. But did it ever occur to you that it was... that? But did it ever occur to you it was because of your original content? And he spelled poser wrong. Um, okay, so should I read you my response? Um, um, hold on. <laughs> that was pretty rude. <laughs> you guys want to hear my response or what? Um, I said, Leon... Only self-important idiots full of themselves state that they unsubscribe from a channel. 
I can't think. You think I can't like rock music because I like Stravinsky or Webern? Do you know anything about my channel? No. I produced rock bands for over 25 years from the grunge, uh, grunge era until 2017. I have over 750 production credits, including rock, metal, and country records. You can't understand how someone has different tastes than you, idiot. <laughs> so, um, he, he's, I, because I like Nirvana, okay, and um, I didn't banhammer him. I don't know if, um, anybody, I always love it when, um, when people write the first thing they write, because it rarely happens that they write this, but um, when they write and they say that they unsubscribed. Okay, so um, uh, so you're either pandering to mainstream audiences or a poser. You aren't much older than me, so I don't see how you can be educated enough to appreciate jazz and still like Nirvana. Okay, so... Did I actually call him an idiot? Oh, of course. I said I said only self. What did I say? Self important idiots or something? I can't remember. I can't find it now. Right that or put put that they unsubscribe. Actually have to to announce to the world that they've unsubscribed. Not just from my channel, but from Adam's channel too. I'm I, right. I know Michael exactly. I unsubscribe, but I'm still talking to you. I'm still watching this video. Like he talks about it. Like he he. Uh, <laughs> like, why are you still watching then if you unsubscribed? Uh, I unsubscribe, but I still check to see all your new videos in case it's something that I like, <laughs> right? So if you look at the beginning of my channel, the, the, the first things I did were, um, were I did drum tuning videos, okay? I did mixer um, uh, analysis, Andy Wallace, where I'm talking about Nirvana, and Lincoln Park and and Rage Against the Machine. And then I did, uh, I mean, all these, like, I did all these early videos that were all, you know, in addition to doing theory stuff, but I did a lot of music production stuff and then realized that nobody watched those videos. But I talked about rock music right at the opening of my channel, right? And, um... You can't understand how I like Nirvana and um, and modern classical music or jazz. Yet I've produced bands since I was unsubscribed statement equals narcissism. Exactly. I was a, um, I mean, I was a music producer. Uh, um, I, from that era on, that's what I did. Where I produce rock bands. That's pretty funny. It's like, how do you not know that if you followed my channel? It's not like I never talk about that. It's ridiculous. I grew up, this guy has no idea about your history exactly, Ali. I grew up listening to rock bands. I'm freaking 50, almost 57 years old. I I um I started with the Beatles and the Stones. Everything music is the name of my channel. There, that's what I called it. Not avant-garde jazz or you know atonal, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, se second Viennese school hangout or something. You know, it's it's. <laughs> uh, so pretty funny though. Um, it's understandable to pick videos that you more hits. When I do what makes this song great, um, I will pick songs. Um, like today, I picked Epic from Faith No More. Why? Because that's their biggest song. That's a song that people want to hear. Yeah, Faith No More nerds uh, want to hear other songs. But... Uh, but uh, because I picked that song, because it searched, the producer of the song wrote to me. Think about that. 
you know, there you go. Would he have, if I had done, you know, uh, I don't know. Would, would he have written to me? No. Um, the name says it all, Martin. There you go. Everything music. Um, that is epic. Can I interview Noel Gallagher through Tim Smith? I probably could interview Noel Gallagher. Well, I probably could get Noel's, uh, I'd have to go to England and interview Noel. I'll tell you what, Mr. Bungle. So I was listening to Mr. Bungle today. I, I don't know if I can play anything on here. Um... Um, I was listening to the California record today, which is a phenomenal record. Um, um, I would do like the Holy Filament, something like that, or, uh, Retro Vertigo. One of those tunes would be amazing. Um, that, that's kind of like... That record is is uh, would fit in any Tim Burton movies. Um, it reminds me of like uh, of uh, of Danny Elfman's film scores. Um. So, but I mean, there's really uh, and any of the songs from that record would be great to do. So, uh, uh, when I do it. I'm going to uh, invite my friend Les over. Les Hall is a dear friend of mine. I've been trying to get him to start his own YouTube channel. He's a great musician. He lives here in Atlanta. <coughs> and um, I was talking to him today. He's a huge fan of Mike Patton. And and uh, we were talking about Mr. Bungle and... and uh, and so I'm trying to get him to uh, to come over and and do do a video with me on that. I'm trying to get him to come over and do a video on anything with me. Get him to do his own channel. Um, could I interview Jellyfish through Tim Smith? Absolutely, Joe. Um, I think that that I'm wondering if Roger Manning might be out at um, um might be out at at NAM, we'll see. It's, it's, I think a lot of stuff will happen next week. Um, War on Drugs, what makes this song great? So I have, um, I'm gonna do the National, but not till, um, uh, but not till I get back from California. I'm gonna do What Makes This Song Great. I have a National song that they sent me, uh, which I'm psyched about. I'll do Tame Impala as well. Um, but um, I've had a lot of people ask me for that. And I'm going to interview Andy Wallace. I absolutely will. I absolutely will. I want to do more female artists. You know, um, uh, I want to do Heart. And, and I mean, there's a lot of 80s that, that, I mean, I've hardly done anything from the 80s, honestly. Um Uh, the Pretenders, um, um, Joni Mitchell. No, I could do Journey. Um, I know I've told the story on here, right? Of um, Cindy Lauper, I love. Um, I told the story about. Um, Oh man, I'm 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 I just lost it. Esperanza Spalding would be great. You know, I tried to go see her. I was going to take Dylan to the show. What's up, Maurizio? Oh, '80s music. That's what I was talking about. You know, I haven't done anything like um, uh, Def Leppard, which I really want to do. Um.
hysteria. Um, how about getting Steve I to do a video on his stuff? So Steve um, is, um, I may go to this rehearsal that um, that Steve and Dweezil are playing together um, on Tuesday night. So I've never met Steve in person. I've only talked to him on video chat. Um, when I met Vinny, did I have the beard? No, I wish I had the beard, but oh man, I found a video on YouTube with the beard. Um, I did a video for this EQ that I got. I got like a hundred bucks off or so. This is about five years ago or something, six years ago. I can't remember when it was, but, uh, my buddy Dan is friends with um, uh, um, with a guy Maurizio. Thank you. Um, my buddy Dan's friends with the guy that uh, Green River that that uh, started that company or owns that company, designs the stuff, and I have a couple of his Harrison EQs, which are great. Uh, they're really great. They've got great high and low pass filters on them that I really like. And he got me a deal on them. And I did a video, a demo video of them. And so, and I forgot about it. It's been out for, for years on the internet. And um, and I have the beard in the video. Oh, it's so good. Um, I'm, should I show it here? I think I can find it here. Um... Oh, and I worked with Desmond Child, by the way, Chopper. I have a video with me and Desmond Child um, and Vince Neal that's on that's on uh, YouTube. Um, I'm going to give you the clip here. Hold on. I did a thing called the remaking of Vince Neal that was on um, that was on VH1 like 200 times. Let me see the beard video. Hold on, I'm going to find it right now. Uh, <clears throat> I got to open up YouTube here and then let's see here. Uh, Rick Beato, Harrison EQ, maybe EQ, a, a great, great river. see here here it is I found it oh man this is gonna be great oh I have a one I look a few I look completely out of my mind here this is great you guys are gonna dig this here hold on <laughs> this is so hilarious let's see if I can get the uh, thing to work here hold on Oh man, don't tell me I can't get it to work. Hold on. Give me a second. There we go. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So, um Hold on. You'll see. Hi, I'm Rick Beato. I'm a producer in Atlanta, Georgia here. I got the PWM 501 a few weeks ago, and I'm really loving it. It's great, great, versatile compressor, and I use it on everything. We just did a demonstration of it on a mono drum room mic, and now we're going to uh, try it out on a bass guitar. Take a listen. EQ. Hold on. Hold on. I come back on. assistant can do it. Hold on. I feel the beat. I 
Wait, where is it? Come on. Come on, where is it here? And put... Hold on. I know I'm in here one other time. Forward feedback. More low. Let's see what it does. Really shape. Hold on. This is illustration of it. On a Hold on. Coming up the tone. Use these two. So I'll just. Where is this? Hear the low end, low pass filter. We'll start taking out some high end. You'll start hearing that pick attack. This was a good demonstration, actually. Hold on. I'll just let it play for a second. My assistant Ken made this video. He does better work than I do. <laughs> Let's see here. I dust on my halo. I feel the beat beneath my feet. And I hear the echo. Let's see, where is it? Hold on. There's one other video, one other thing. The misjudge beneath my. To uh, show you the Harrison EQ, how to use the Q buttons and how to, as you can hear it. Take. Come on, where is it? Start with but adding. Plus, I thought it sounded good at first. Oh, here we go. Here we go. The PWM 501 and the Harrison 32 EQ have been a great addition to our studio. The EQ we use on everything. We'll use it on guitars, on drums, on bass. You can get really, really creative sounds. Carving the guitars to fit in the mix or if you need a little more attack on your bass guitar or you want a room mic that has um, a lot of sizzle to it, they're really natural sounding and the filters are the best sounding filters on any EQ I've used. So there you this go. This is Rick Beato for Great River. Okay, so, um, so there's my... Uh, wait a minute, all this stuff, Serpico. Still got the Starbucks cup, Elliot. That's right, man. <laughs> Somebody sent that to me. They could not believe it. They could not believe it. That that was me. They're, they said, oh my God, I saw this video. I was watching this video and this gear thing. And then, and I was like, who is this guy? And then I said my name and, 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 and they, uh, they couldn't believe it. Um, <laughs> Tommy John, <laughs> I need to post that on my main channel, right? Should I do that? Um, no, I only had the beard for a year, 11 months. Um, the voice is right. Yeah. Beard to lose your keys in. That's right, Tom. <laughs> Post it. Uh, that was... Um, um, Got to get that beard back. Man. Um... There you go. So that's like the only video 
that I have of the beard, I think. No, everyone hated it. My wife, everyone hated it. My kids hated it. Um, it was like six years ago or something. Um, something like that. My hair um, went white really fast. It's weird. It's my, you know what's weird? It's like my hair is white, but it looks like it's getting darker again now. I don't know why. It's so strange. It's like it's a... Uh, I mean, I'm looking at it in here, and it looks like it's uh, um, it looks like it's getting darker again now. Like people ask me, "Oh, do you dye your your beard white, uh, your hair white?" People ask me that all the time. Um, it's probably it is. Oh, it's definitely stress, Daniel. Definitely. Um, Grecian formula. No Grecian formula. Um, at least I got hair. I look younger with white hair than with a black beard. No, I had a salt and pepper stage. Um, but not... Uh, my beard started to go gray, like really, you know, over the course of... Um, yeah, I had I had some some really str um, heavy stress um, uh, when I got uh, tinnitus with my ears. Um, when I first got it, I had a major stress episode, and um, um, and I couldn't sleep for weeks. Um, I'm 57, and and like half the hair on my head fell out and my, my beard went gray, everything. And my, my, um, uh, my doctor said that you, when you have a really, a, you can have an acute stress episode like that and your, and your hair will fall out. And then my hair, um, and my, my tinnitus is, 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 uh, it's actually intermittent. It's, um, um, it's dead silent today, but, but I had it when it, when I first got it, it was like a hundred DB of 10 K for, um, for about three weeks. Um, and I went to all these doctors and everything. And, and, um, and about three months after that, my, um, like half the hair in my head fell out. My beard too, same thing. And, um, and then, um, then it grew back and, um, and, and my hair just started going white. So there you go. Um, no wonder I don't recommend headphones. That's right. I'm, I am so lucky that I don't, um, that I live in silence most of the time. My God, I am really, um, very lucky. Um, but that, when it happened, uh, yeah, something, something, tra tra um, yeah, a, a sinus infection and, um, and then I was taking a, uh, antibiotics, like a Z-Pack and, um, and, And one day, it went from nothing to 100 dB of 10K. So, and now, right now, dead silence. 
Thank God. Um, but I'm, I'm very protective of my hearing. I know people purposely, um, purposely dye their hair white. Uh, I had at the same time that it started, I had a, um, uh, a clogged, uh, eustachian tube as well. So, um, oh, what the, so the day that it started ringing, I was in, I was working on a session and I, um, and I just couldn't, I couldn't stand it because not my ears were plugged too. And, and it was ringing and every kick drum that hit my, my head ached because, um, because the, my U station tube was clogged. And I went to two different ENTs. The second ENT I went to, or audiologist I went to, I went to ENTs and an audiologist. And the audiologist uh, was the one that, that figured out that I had the, um, I didn't use a neti pot, no. Uh, figured out that I had um, that clogged eustachian tube. And, um, and maybe it didn't last for three weeks, the acute tinnitus. Maybe it was like, two weeks or so. No, it was three. It was, I got on prednisone, uh, to, because they thought it was an inflammation of my, uh, auditory nerve that it might've caused it. And, um, um, and the prednisone made, made, made me not be able to sleep. And then not being able to sleep made the ringing go get worse. And that's when, uh, when I was, I was just so stressed out and literally my hair would just come out in clumps all over. Um, did I have any vertigo? No, I did not have vertigo then. Um, but uh, oh man, it was it was so painful to uh, hear every kick drum hit that happened. Uh, even in the back of the control room, um, it it, um, it 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 just it was like having a toothache or something. It just was throb every every kick drum. Um, so, anyways, but thank God that that's uh, um, thank God that that's not the case, and that uh, and the only thing that happened is that um, is that my hair went white and and grew back. So, um, Bob, I did not the strat neck. You know, thank you for reminding me that. I sent it back to them, and they said eight to ten weeks. So, um, so there you go. We'll see what happens when it comes back. Um, boy, this was going to be a short live stream. Okay, RB170. I'll announce it one more time. The uh, code for 25% off anything... Um, anything in my store, I'll put it on here. So if you guys want to want to buy my Beato book, you want to buy mugs, whatever, you want to support the channel, that's how you can do it. I'm sorry I never post the code over here. It's totally not cool, but uh, but I'm uh, I did so. Um, so there it is. You guys are the best. Always. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. My book is PDF. Yes. How can we support the beard? <laughs> Donate to the beard. <laughs> See you guys.